Hello everybody, welcome back to another video, and today I want to, like, remake, for the third time, my animation system video, because the last two times were kind of, like, in a rush. I didn't have, you know, the time to make them, because 2.2 just came out, and I wanted to, you know, get to it. So, I'm- this is the actual proper way to use the keyframe system. No screw-ups. And, and loop it without 3,000 triggers. Let, let's go. So, here's a little example. I have a looping spike animation right here. These are the only two triggers that I used. And it's just gonna infinitely loop just like that. So to begin doing what you want to do, first you, what you want to do is put down your keyframe trigger and then one of these right here, the one with the arrow that's facing up, it's the other keyframe. So just call this a keyframe. Uh, then what you want to do is give this, only this one, a group. I'm going to give this group four because that's the next free for me. And what you want to do right here is just put this animation group ID thing right here to whatever that group just was. So for me, that would be four. You can also set that right in here, this group ID thing right here. Uh, this is actually going to be your object that you want to move. So this spike right here, we're going to give it group 5. And all you want to do is just set this right here to whatever your object is on. For me, that would be 5. And we can set that here too. The target ID right here is uh, 5. So we're just going to set that to 5. And... Lastly, all we have to do, to, just to get a basic keyframe here, is copy this keyframe right here, and then get rid of the group. And that should let you use the keyframe. So as you can see, they just moved without moving that. And if you, if you wanted to, you could also use curve mode. So what curve does is you can copy your keyframe right here. And if you move it down, you can see it obviously has like a straight line here. But if you want, you can actually enable curve mode on any selected keyframes by just checking this curve option right here. And what this will allow you to do is wherever you drag this, it'll make a nice curve for you to follow. So if I do this, you can see it does a curve. And you can also scale these up and rotate them so if i were to do something like this then the spike would follow that pattern so whatever the scale rotation and position is of your keyframe is what the object will look like and then of course if you disabled curve mode it wouldn't have the curve so it would just be a straight line like this Another thing you can do is add easings, so if I were to select all of these and add an easing a, uh, of ease in and out, you can see it obviously follows that easing that you selected. And I'm pretty sure if I were to just uh, set this one to none, there'd be no easing going to it, and there'd be easing going from the uh, to this one. Exactly, so this had no easing right here, but this had easing. And then if I were to give this easing and then not give this easing, it still followed it. And lastly, I'm going to show you how to loop this. So looping is a little bit more complicated, but it isn't that hard now with this new way I found of doing it. So I actually want to have curve mode on for this. You don't have to have curve mode on, but I think it'll look nicer if I do. So I'm just going to turn on curve. And I'm also going to have an easing of yeah, ease in and out on this. And all I have to do is take this keyframe right here, set it to spawn trigger and multi trigger, and give it a group. So we're gonna set this to six. And then what you wanna have is a spawn trigger that doesn't have touch trigger or spawn trigger on it, unless you know you need that for your level. But it has to have that group ID of this keyframe trigger in it. So that's six. So I can just set that to six. And then what you want to do is copy your last keyframe of your animation. And you want to make sure that it has the exact, the exact size and rotation and position as your uh, first keyframe. So these two are identical already. So I can just move it over. 
and you want to make sure that you spawn your keyframe trigger. So all I have to do right here is just turn on 6. And what this will do is loop the animation infinitely. And, and, and this will never stop. It will always constantly be rotating just like that. And then of course if I were to have this as a touch trigger right here. This won't start until I touch that trigger. And as always, you could have it just do this, but instead it doesn't spawn anything, and then uh, when you touch it, it will just go around. That's also another option if you wanted to have this as spawn trigger. Anyways, yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, if you want, you can subscribe and uh, like the video and stuff. Yeah, please do bye.